Development of the breast came f comes essentially the complete development of the breast as we know it come from two gastrulation layers. Well, these two gastrulation layers, we're going to say them first, which is the ectoderm and the mesoderm, or they call it the mesenchyme, the same thing. Now, for development of the breast in general, it starts off as an ectoderm, as a epidermis. Let me explain. So let's first draw here. Let's first draw here a baby, a fetus. We got a fetus, and we got a neck, and we have a body. That's the only thing we're concerned about. Now, within the baby's body, when we're looking at, of course, an interior view, basically, do you remember the ectoderm and mesoderm layer? You got the ectoderm here, right? And then we're going to draw in black color, the mesoderm under, I mean, in red color, the mesoderm underneath. Basically, what's happening is that part of the ectoderm in black color is going to be thickened. It's going to proliferate and form a thickened part of the ectoderm, or they call it the epidermis, because as you know, the ectoderm does, will not eventually give rise to the breast, but it will also give rise to the epidermis of the skin. So this thickened part or this thickened band of epidermis right here is going to be thickened, not just in widths, but also in lengths. So if we were to draw it, basically, we would draw it in a line. But remember, this would be a very thickened line right, like here, like right here. But basically, we would have not one, but two lines of thickened epidermis that do not grow in widths but also in lengths. We call these thickened bilateral, bilateral because there's two bands of epidermis that extend or elongate from the axilla, from the armpit, like right here, if you were to draw the, the arms real quick, from the axilla all the way to the inguinal region, a little groin, the groin region. Here I'll draw the axilla just to make sense. Now this extension from the thickened epidermis, these bilateral thickened bands of epidermis from the axillary inguinal region, we give them a name. They form a line across the chest. We call these mammary, mammary line or ridges because they look like ridges. Now these mammary lines, at some point during birth, I mean, during, some point during development, after like this occurs during the sixth week. So after two weeks, let's say after the eighth week, it's all of these mammary lines, they're going to degenerate, all of them, tamam, all of them, except, 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 except the portion of the mammary line within the thoracic region. So we're talking about this region. So this portion of the mammary line within the thoracic region, it is persistent. It will not degenerate, but everything else should supposedly degenerate. Because if it didn't, it will give you to an anomaly, right? Like polycelia or polymachia, for example. Now, this portion of the mammary line that is still persistent and still thickened we will now look into it now what happens to it next so let's remove this entire section real quick and let's delete all these just so we can look at it in full detail perfect yeah. let's look at the thickened part of the memory memory line shall we let's draw right here an ectoderm this boy is the ectoderm and this boy in red color so i'm going to make sure underneath the ectoderm is going to be the mesoderm so it is going to be your mesoderm now what happens on this portion of the mammary line that is still persisting within the thoracic region well first the thickened part of the epidermis some part of it is going to start to penetrate the mesenchyme. It's going to start to penetrate now the mesoderm. And basically what is happening 
basically what's going to happen is there's going to be a solid downgrowth. Solid downgrowth, yeah, and there's going to be penetration of the epidermis to the mesenchyme, and it's going to form this downgrowth, a growth that's going downwards. Now, this portion of the epidermis, or this portion, you could say, of the mammary line, I'm going to give this a, a, a special name. We're going to call this the primary mammary buds. Buds mana a sac, like a sac, like a bag, basically. Right? Now, this primary mammary buds is not going to start from there. It's like a sprout, like when you give a seed and gives branches of trees eventually. This primary mammary buds, we're going to remove this, and it's going to give the rise to other buds. These buds are known as secondary mammary buds. So if you were to draw it, it would look like this. Okay? It would look like this. Multiple secondary buds. Now, I did remove the primary mammary buds, but just imagine that the primary mammary bud will give rise to other secondary buds. Tamam? Tamam. So these are now secondary but I'll just say them buds, which came from where? They came from the primary memory buds. So you got the primary memory buds that came as a result of downgrowth, downgrowth, solid downgrowth of the memory line or the epidermis into the mesenchyme. And from these primary memory buds, they will proliferate and give rise to other buds known as secondary memory buds. Now, these secondary memory buds, they are going to give you eventually what is known as the lactiferous duct. Lactiferous duct. You remember these? The ducts that connect the lobules to the nipple. They're going to give rise to these and to other branches, as is mentioned in the PowerPoint. What does it mean by branches? It means that not only will it give it lactiferous duct, lactiferous duct, I put an initial here, it also give branches. Branches, yani, it will give alveoli. The alveoli, the cells within the breast that will secrete milk, alveolar structures like these. Like these, like these, like these. And small efferent ductules. But if you were curious about branches, that's what they mean. So let's remove alveoli and focus on lactiferous duct and branches. Now, how does it give it like how does it give rise to lactiferous duct and branches? Well, you see, I didn't draw any color, but if you can imagine it, just imagine it. Imagine if I put this in dark color, right? It's solid. These buds are solid, right? You're solid, tamam? Now, if they're solid, and let me give it a different color, or just speed up the process, there we go. Imagine this bud is solid. Every single one of these buds are solid, tamam? So, in order to give rise to lactiferous duct and branches, I have to do canalization. There's going to be canalization of the secondary mammary buds. And what's canalization of mammary buds? Canalization, man, now I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this or let me just give it a different thickness i'm gonna do this canalization like a canal the canal where boats uh, go through you know under a bridge this is what i mean canalization i'm gonna do an opening or opening of these memory buds secondary memory was to give me like the ducts which will connect to the nipple eventually tamam eventually to the nipple that's what it'll connect to. So this is in one memory bud. This is going to be the same for all of these. I'm not going to do the same for all of these, but it's going to be the same of all of these. So the secondary memory buds are going to give rise to lactiferous duct and branches, especially lactiferous duct. How? By canalization of these memory buds. And eventually, you're going to form a total of 15 to 20 lactiferous ducts. Tamam? And overall, that is almost the development of the breast itself. We didn't go talk about the nipple yet. Now, we finished the lobules. They pretty much form the lobules, as you know. But do you know what surrounds the lobules? Connective tissue, right? Look at this nip. Look at this breast. It's surrounded by connective tissue, right? And connective tissue that will give you fibrous septa, Cooper's ligament, or whatever, but connective tissue. And in between each lobule in the breast, do you remember fat? There was fat in between them. So the fat and the connective tissue, they're not going to come from the ectoderm. They're going to come from the 
mesoderm or from the mesenchyme. If you want to be more specific, it's mentioned somatic layer of interembryonic mesoderm. But the same thing, from the mesenchyme. And it's going to surround it. I'm going to draw it in a circle right here. It's going to surround it. Or let me draw it in pink so you can see it clearly. You're going to see this circle right here, this background over here is going to be connective tissue and it's going to be fat that's going to surround what the breast as we know or these lobules as we know. The maps is going to come from where? From the mesoderm or the ectoderm, the connective tissue and the fat are going to from, come from the mesoderm. Top to ma'am. Okay, now the final thing that we're missing at this point is the nipple. Now, let me remove this real quick so I can show you in a better way the nipple. So the nipple, see the nipple, it's quite funny because the nipple at first is not raised during development. In fact, it starts off depressed. How? Well, you see this portion, what did we mention this black color? It was the epidermis, right? Or the thickened epidermis. This portion right here of the stick and epidermis, this portion right here was going to give you what? The lobules and the selective duct and so on. But the, the, this part of the epidermis right here, the upper part, this part right here is going to be, the, at the origin side of the memory gland, is also going to be depressed. It's going to be depressed. Now, when is it depressed? When is depressed, basically? It's going to form a pit. Tamam. It's going to form a pit. And this is what I mean by the pit right here. Do you see the space as a result? As a result of the... Oh, my bad. As a result of the depression of the epidermis, or the ectoderm, as they say it, depression down below, it's going to form a pit. This pit is known as memory pit. Memory pit. Tamam. Memory pit this area right here pit like a space like an empty hole basically an empty hole tamam? which is going to be the primordium for the future nipples and you know what you want to know the funniest part is going to stay like that until birth so for the rest of pregnancy basically you're going to have no nipple you're going to be basically the nipple is going to be inverted not exverted no eversion there's inversion but no eversion tamam? until birth and you got to keep those in mind for the nipples as how will they be raised so for during before birth it's not going to be raised it's going to be depressed the nipples so what happens after birth so this is this entire section is before birth what happens after birth well the baby at first the nipples are not going to be raised but shortly after birth you see the nipples they're finally going to be raised like that and why is that why is that because remember what I said about the connective tissue and the fat coming from the mesoderm that surrounds the breast well do you remember that of course the nipple you know the nipple is surrounded by an and by what was called an areola the areola which is basically darkened skin right basically darkened skin right here right darkened skin base of the nipple now underneath the areola there's connective tissue like we said surrounding the breast this part of the connective tissue not all the connective tissue but this part of the connective tissue let's draw it let's do a nah, you know what we'll not draw it but this part of the connective tissue in the breast you can imagine this portion right here that is underneath the alve the uh, the areola which is in brown color just type it in brown color this portion of the connective tissue is going to proliferate and it's going to basically go this direction upwards upwards for what upwards for the nipple so this proliferation right here this region of connective tissue underneath the areola or i could say it right here underneath the areola tamam, are going to push the nipple out they're going to raise the nipple out and when they raise the nipple out, then you will see the nipple as you know it. Like when you look at a baby, when you look at a baby with the body, you're going to see this point. You're going to see this, not the breast, but you're going to see these points. 
these points are the nipples. The nipples are going to be raised. Why? Because there's proliferation of a specific region of the connective tissue underneath the areola. And you guys know the areola. Right underneath the areola section, the connective tissue surrounding the breast, they're going to proliferate and they're going to push this memory pit upwards and form a conical projection. Con a conical, yani, like a cone, but yani, rounded, yani, not sharp like this, rounded. So conical projection from the lower half of the breast. And this officially completes yani, the structures of all of the breasts. Is it maturation? Well, for, for males, we're done. But for females, eventually, it's another development. But we don't need to know for that. But for overall, this is the embryological development of the breast in general. Tamam? And this is everything that we've mentioned. Tamam? Everything that I have mentioned, inshallah. And of course, one more thing is secretion, which is meant that the Dr. Sherbini has mentioned before. In, in babies, there may be small amounts of secretion coming from the nipples. And the reason why is because breastfeeding, or not breastfeeding, no, before breastfeeding, during pregnancy, there is a transfer of basically maternal hormones like estrogen, progesterone, that are across the placenta barrier and goes through the fetal circulation, basically interact with this entire development and promotes secretion of tiny amounts of, you know, milk fluid or some type of secretion. They call it cholesterol. Right? They call it witch's milk, which is completely normal and disappears like a few days after birth. Tamam? That's what it means by that. Tamam? During pregnancy, I didn't mean breastfeeding, pregnancy. Tamam? And that's basically it. Tamam? That's basically it.